Today we're going to, we're going to do a demonstration of CAD Talk. CAD Talk is a, is a bi-directional integration between your CAD, PDM, PLM systems and the ERP. So the idea is that we take data from the CAD, PDM and PLM systems and transform it from the engineering bill of material into manufacturing bill of material that the ERP requires in order to do the manufacturing and production. We do have a bi-directional interface, so we can actually go back and forth between the CAD and the ERP. Today, I'm actually going to demonstrate one CAD system. We actually work with all major CAD systems on the market. But today, I'm actually just going to demonstrate SOLIDWORKS. The actual use of the software is very much the same, to, regardless of what CAD system you're using. So we'll actually start off with a very simple part here. This is gear shaft assembly, just a two-part assembly. I like to start off with that because it really makes it simple to understand and easy to follow what's happening, which is all new for you. And then we'd like to move on to a much more complex example, which is a CDU scooter that you see here. So this is a larger, probably 40-part assembly with multiple levels. And another thing to note is, is that first assembly, the gear shaft assembly, is actually a sub-assembly of this assembly. So we actually get the idea of what it's like when I bring something in that's already existing in the ERP, as opposed to being all brand new parts, okay? What it's gonna do is it's actually gonna create any parts that need to be created that are new to this the ERP. And then it's also gonna update any parts that are existing with any changes that we make depending on the rules that we set up. So when I mention rules is a CAD talk actually has this kind of an expression AI engine, artificial intelligence engine, that it uses to figure out like how to convert between a CAD and ERP. Now that engine can be configured using specific rules to the customer using like an expression engine that's very much like working with Excel functions. So you set up your, there's if then logic or there's uh, inferences and things like that that can be set up. And we actually include that as part of the cost of the installation. So when you buy um, the product, the installation's included and we set all that up for you, but we don't, it's not a custom version of CAD Talk, it's actually just configured for your needs. All right, let's get started with the demo. So here's the CAD Talk interface and as you can see here, at the top toolbar, I've got all these different CAD systems. I've got Inventor and SOLIDWORKS, and we also work with spreadsheets. So we support every major CAD system on the market, CAD, PDM, and PLM. So this is just a kind of an example of a few. Now this interface is actually what we call the standalone interface, which is actually used by someone downstream from the engineer. So we found that there's a couple different uh, use cases for CAD Talk, one being the engineer themselves using the product. And in that case, we actually have the same interface that works inside of the CAD software. So the engineer can easily do this work himself. Okay, so the other use case is that the engineer doesn't really know anything about the ERP side and what's required and things like that. So instead of having him use it or her, we're actually gonna have someone downstream from, from the engineer use the product and actually read the CAD files and CAD data directly. Our integration doesn't require any CAD software to be loaded, so we actually can read CAD files directly. You'll see here, I'll actually open up SOLIDWORKS files directly from the drive, and then read them and bring them into the ERP. Another thing to note is that we actually work with all the major PDM software. So today, I'll actually open things up for my file system, but if you have SOLIDWORKS PDM or Vault or any of the other P PDM or PLM softwares, we can pull data from those directly as well. So this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna show the simplest case. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and say load SOLIDWORKS file. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that propeller gear shaft assembly. I'm gonna hit open. And it's gonna ask me which configuration that I wanna open. This is a SOLIDWORKS feature. I'm gonna pick up, just pick one configuration here. Say okay. And so what's happening is you'll see the parts kind of flash by. What's actually already done is it's, it's read through the entire SOLIDWORKS model. And then it also is speaking to the ERP in the background and asking it if anything exists and looking at that data and then what it's doing is it's transforming the data coming from the engineering side, SOLIDWORKS side, into a proposed bill of material in the ERP. So here you have the top level item, which is that assembly, and you have the two parts underneath it, which is there's the shaft and there's the gear. So the shaft and the gear come together in an assembly operation, which you also see an assembly operation here. This is the assembly operation inside of the ERP to make this assembly. So it's very intuitive here. You see this kind of hierarchical tree view that's showing you how the bill of material comes together. Back to the idea of this expression engine. One of the things I want to note is, is that the expression engine does things that are simple, like, hey, copy the description from the CAD model over to the ERP description field. It can do th really smart things too. Also like say, you know what? It says, I know that description coming from, from SOLIDWORKS is really long. And it's not going to fit into my field in the ERP. So I need to break that up across multiple fields maybe. 
And it, knows, it even knows to like break it up, but not necessarily in the middle of a word. It'll actually break it up in a space between two words. So that's kind of an example of where the engine is, the AI is very smart at figuring out how to bring that data over. Another thing to note is, is that this assembly operation actually does not exist inside of the SOLIDWORKS. The AI expression engine's figuring that out. It says, you know what, I know that's an assembly coming over from SOLIDWORKS, so I need to do something with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an assembly operation to this routing because I know that they're gonna need to assemble this in the manufacturing side. So it's, it's making that inference about data that's in the model to figure out what's required for the ERP. We can configure how it figures that out using those same rules that I spoke about earlier that can be configured for your installation. This is a full editor. I have access to anything I'd like to do inside of the ERP, it, right in this editor. So if I wanna change like the description on this part, I can just literally go in here and change that and change that description. I can edit every single field, including any custom fields that you've added to your ERP install. So it's a very, very deep integration with CAD Talk. Features that you expect to be in here are here, so we can support notes and creating warehouses, all kinds of things that we can do out of the box with CAD Talk. We actually have no customers who have custom installations of CAD Talk or anything like that. They're always just configured for their use, but they're very full featured and very deep integration. The same validation is also available in here as well. So if there was like a missing required field, like this product code, say it, it wasn't there, you see there's a little error here. It says, you know, that product code's required. I, I gotta have a product code to save this assembly. And the save button actually became disabled. If I wanted to change that, I can hit the drop down, and here's all those product codes directly from the ERP. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the product code that I want again, or I can search for it as well through the, at the top. F FG100 is the one I wanted. Finish goods. And hit that again, you'll notice that as soon as I tab off, It'll revalidate and the icon will become will go away and the save icon will become enabled. So once I have it the way I like it, all I've got to do is hit save and it will actually create all three part numbers and that bill of material all at the same time. And it actually did it really, really quickly there. But that's why everything turns green. So the, the red parts meant that it was new, the new parts and new bill of material. And then the green means that everything I'm seeing here is exactly the way it is in the ERP. Let's take a look at that same item over the ERP. Okay, now we're over in ERP. So let's take a look at that same part. I'm actually gonna do a search for DS06. Remove the filter here. And this will show me all three parts now over in, in the ERP. So here I've got the top level assembly. There's the shaft and there's the gear. And you'll also notice that the part number, the descriptions obviously come over as well as a picture of the part that is actually extracted directly from the solid model and brought over into part of the import. Now, if you don't want that, we can configure that to not to come in, but this is a nice little add-on feature that you can see the parts directly inside of what they look like inside of the ERP coming from the CAD models themselves. If we want to look at the bill of material view of that, we can do the same thing. So let's go ahead and open this up. ZS06. Dash 302 is my assembly. Say okay. And now you'll see here that I have the same, there's my assembly, the assembly operation, and the two parts. Bill of materials also showed up inside of the ERP as well. Okay. So that's pretty interesting, but I mean, it's just a two part assembly, but just to kind of get the idea across of how easy it is to literally start with nothing in the ERP. And all you have is a SOLIDWORKS model and then bringing the entire thing in all at one time ready for production. So we can go from, from nothing to something very, very quickly and get to the shop floor in record time. So let me go ahead and do the bigger assembly to kind of show more of the power of the product. Okay, so I'm gonna do load SOLIDWORKS file. I'm gonna grab the, uh, CD, the, the larger assembly I'm gonna pick the default configuration. I'm gonna say, okay. And this will take a, few, a little bit longer. You'll see down at the bottom left here, I've got the status going through. It'll flash through all the parts as it's going through. I think there's like 40 or 50 parts. There's no limit to the number of parts that CAD Talk can load or bring in at one time. We actually even have customers who do thousands of parts at a time. So we have a customer who actually makes semi-trailers and they'll bring in the entire semi-trailer as one big load, okay? So it'll, obviously it'll take some time, but I mean, think about that compared to doing it manually. Would, you, would take you a week or two to do manually. They can do in several hours with CAD Talk. You also can work with it as sub-assembly, a sub-assembly at a time. So sometimes like if people want to just do incremental releases and they want to release designs as they go and then ultimately do the, the upper level design at the end, you can do that as well because CAD Talk's always reconciling against what's currently in the ERP. So let me go ahead and expand 
this, and you'll see this fully indented bill of material. So here you can see I've got multiple levels. I've got a drive assembly here, which also has another level for a gear train, which looks like this. And then you'll notice even further down, there's these yellow parts, and there's my gear shaft, or my prop shaft assembly from my first time I brought it in. And it even recognizes that I changed that description from before. So one thing to note was is that if I'd like, I could, I, actually, I didn't save that description back in the model, but it still remembers that the description was that way when I changed it last time. Now, if I, wouldn't, if I wanted to, I could have written that back into the model, and then it would have came in the same way. The configuration of which one drives the data is really up to you. So if you want the, the data to always be updated from the model into CRP, that's just literally changing the expression for the data coming in. If you want the ERP, retain the changes that you made over there that before, and then just kind of, like, like in this case, the description, like I did here, it retains the description if it's not a new item. Now, these rules can be changed at a field level. You could say, you know, in the case of description, always come from SOLIDWORKS. But in the case of product code, obviously, always come from the ERP. But we have super flexible rules for how this data gets brought over and how it's merged. So same thing. If I want to make any changes to this bill of material, I, I have the ability to make any change that I want, changing these any field, I have support for every single field. You'll also notice that there's fields that are yellow. What yellow fields means that it's actually tracking the changes from either the default, if it's a new part, or from the existing part inside of So if, if there's something in CSI that's been changed, it, it comes out and you've changed it, it's part of the mapping, it's keeping track of all those changes. You're also keeping track of everything in the changes pane here too. So even if you don't have things shown in the interface here, we also can see all the changes that have happened right here, here in the changes pane. So it's actually giving me the original version and also what it is currently. See so original value and the current value. Same as before, once I'm done with everything, all I've got to do is hit save and it will actually create every single item that it needs to create as well as the, all the different levels of the bill of material all at the same time. So you think about this, if you had to do this by hand, this could take you several hours to enter all of the data in to, for each item and then enter each level of the bill of material and it's all this routing steps. We're actually gonna do all of that in one foul swoop. And just that quickly, that entire assembly has been saved over the ERP. Open CSO 6-100, which is my assembly. And now you can see that I've got multiple levels of a bill of material. All those parts have now been created and all the different levels of the bill of material are now in here ready to go. So once again, the propeller shaft assembly that I brought in, which is updated, there's any changes, but there's also, it also created any new parts in that same assembly that were already there. All right, well, that concludes the demo. Thank you for your time.